Yeah, um, this is uh, an extremely important issue about Gideon's Bible, because Gideon's Bible have just started recently printing and selling and distributing, printing and distributing free Bibles, but it's come to my attention that Gideon's has changed their policy. Um, and Gideon's is now distributing a, a version of the Bible, so-called, called the English Standard Version, which is, um, which is very similar to the Holman's translation. And, um, uh, yeah, this, uh, this, uh, sort of partnership with Gideon's and, um, and this publisher is, I think, um, I think I'm um, wrong-headed and I think it's a, um, a commercial decision and I don't think um, I don't think anyone could be should place any kind of confidence in the reliability of the scholars who translated the ESV or in the motivations of anyone who's trying to distribute it um, well that sounds controversial but look here this is from the 16 this is from 2016 crossway an article from about crossway's decision to stop editing the ESV ESV is produced by a publisher by a publisher they're not a church organization they're not a mission organization like Gideon's they're not a Christian organization with a identifiable um, code or mission or creed. So the ESV is produced by a publisher, but the men on the committee, many of whom I know, are, the, are of the mindset that they want to foster confidence in the Bible as God's word. Said Blomberg, who was a New Testament professor at Denver, Denver Seminary. Um, I mean, I don't have any confidence in the ESV or the, the Greek critical text they're using. Um, and I think Blomberg seems to be in the same trance dance as a lot of the modern scholars. Um, but let me just point out Yeah, but my point is, you see, that here, uh, the decision to create the permanent text of the ESV was made with equally great care. Now, what does that mean in practice? Let's have a look at the ESV version of Leviticus 16. Verse 8. <clears throat> And Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for Azazel. Well, this is, um, Leviticus, English Standard Version, Leviticus 16. Um, this is the Azazel miss from rabbinical theology and I mean already we're talking already we've already stepped into the twilight zone and we're right into Looney Tunes world this this verse has always been traditionally translated um, and Aaron shall offer his and Aaron shall cast lot upon the two goats one for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat the word of Zazel was always translated scapegoat except in the middle ages like you took up the Jew, rabbinical theology started turning to the name of some kind of demon, demon see here like um, verse 8 and verse 10 in the Jewish um, they don't translate it scapegoat but by the name of some kind of kooky demon of mythology but there's no mythology anyway it's just a mistranslation. 
Um, but you see, this is the ESVs have departed from the King James template, and now they're off <coughs> with the fairies. <coughs> and um, I mean, this is just one example of many I intend to show you of where it's a combination of just these Blomberg, I mean, who just, you know, these sort of what seemed to be modern liberal scholarship, which produced the Greek, the Greek critical text, which is a complete abortion of reason, and this is modern pseudo-conservatism of people like Blomberg, I mean, who are what, crypto-Jewish? I mean, this is the this is the ESV being published and distributed by the Venerable Gideons, which used to, 30, 40 years ago, just reprint the King James. And then they started doing the New King James. But the New King James was, they were paying money to the publishers of the NKGB, which was, and, and paying copyright. And now they've gone off to the ESV, which is, um, as will be shown, to be um, a mistake. And, well, nothing like the Texas Receptus, as they claim. Well, yeah, the, um, <clears throat> well, for example, um, uh, to demonstrate uh, how the ESV and the um, certainly the King James and um, and as a consequence earlier editions of the Gideon's Bible, how they differ, um, how the new Gideons differ from the old Gideons is a good point here. Let's have a look at King James Bible, 1 Timothy 3, verse 16. Um, uh, and without uh, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed in on in the world, received up into glory which is the gospel of Jesus Christ in a verse. Now, for as you might, now, English Standard Version, for example, 1 Timothy 3.16, goes here. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, Vindicated by the Spirit and seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up into glory. He was manifest in the flesh. Now that's um, that's actually quite. If you look at these notes in the ESV, who some manuscripts got, others which. Um, which is a misrepresentation of the facts to the point of you'd have to call it um, a lie or a um, deliberate obfuscation because this, this actual verse has been argued about for centuries and even Isaac Newton wrote a pamphlet on the subject about how in, the, in some in days in long ago um, the, it, it became the word became God rather than who it says he but the whole point was that it was in the Greek it was who because there's just a difference between the way the Greek's written and whether there's a capital theta or whether it's a capital omicron 
and there's the difference between them is one tiny dot and now conspiracy theorists like Isaac Newton argued that the the um, the conservatives the trinitarian conservatives had simply taken the theta and put in the omicron and turned it into a theta by putting in a dot of ink making it read god theos um, uh, in God was manifest in the flesh instead of who but that's incredibly silly and he just says he instead of what it actually instead of who and so um, this argument about what other manuscripts say um, it's the same it's the same just absurd world it's the same absurd world of modern critical scholarship I mean David Daniels from Chick, Chick Publications has demonstrated that the, um, the Alexandrinus the, the manuscript Alexandrinus is a fake it was actually an actual fake antiquity and this Alexand no Sinaiticus was Sinaiticus was a fake antiquity and by extension even Vaticanus and Alexandrinus were fakes because they agreed with the other fakes <laughs> they're from the same work workshop of fakes um, but this is my point you see the ESV and the New Gideon's versions depart from the model of the King James Bible and from the text of Scriptures. They are utterly dependent on some kind of Looney Tunes text, Greek textuals, Greek critical text, which changes every day, depending on it's, it's a politically correct abortion. And it changes every day, depending on what some you know, antiquity someone digs up and, and was claims to have dug up. So, yeah, this is the problem with Gideon's at the moment. Well, this is... Um, when I'm talking about people, uh, 1 John 5 7. First epistle to of John to its churches. Chapter 5, verse 7. Um, as you know, famously written in the uh, King James Bible, the version, we get this this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, and not by water only but by water and blood and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth for there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one and there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree in one okay Now, this is um, famously one of the most hated and excoriated verses in the Bible. I mean, there's a whole... There's a Richard Simon was a Jesuit who started a rumour in the, in the days of Isaac Newton's uh, 17th century that, um, that this verse was never in the Greek as he claimed he couldn't find Greek manuscripts containing it in the Paris Library where he looked um, so he, 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 gave, he gave birth to this conspiracy theory that, that the Catholic Church had um, basically uh, browbeaten and bullied Erasmus into including chapter 7 verse 7 as it is here 
um, for theological reasons. Um, now, anyway, that that theory is wrong in fact. In fact, there are great manuscripts which have the comma one and well, you see, m many of the new criti new English translations from the Greek critical texts from the like the late 90th, late nineteenth century. Well, they just they just they just they just collapse seven and verses seven and eight into one, and they just throw away the um comma one the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, claiming it is not is not authentic. Now, this, um, as you see, that that's a, this represents a different philosophy. Um, now, this is previously wasn't been done by the Gideons, or excuse me, this. Pre in the past hasn't been done by Gideons, but now they've um they it was it was okay in the um, the NKJV, but now they've they're now they're pushing the ESV. Um, this is a good example of the uh, modern expurgated, um, amended, and uh, basically edited text uh, um, of the textual critics. Uh, so. Um, this is, amongst many other things, I, I will at length have to go into. This is an example of the um, the New Gideon's Bible being of uh, untrustworthy. <laughs>